hey, this is going to be a work in progress video, part one, of building the Overwatch prop blaster for the character Lucio. Now, I'm not going to make it out of cardboard in the, uh, in the final prop. Uh, I'm going to 3D print it. This is a little miniature version that I printed just to get an idea of the volume of it and where things will sit. Um, but the final will be this scale, and I'll print it in parts, which I assemble and also have space for the electronics to sit, working trigger, that sort of stuff. The first thing I needed to do was figure out what are the functions of the gun. By researching the game, uh, I figured out that I have a couple of different trigger pulls that I want to do, so I've got those sound effects. Uh, I have a reload sound, and I have a special, which is like a large sonic blast that he can do. Uh, the character is a DJ, so he's got a couple of different songs that he plays, and he can switch between these two modes. This is called the crossfade. And uh, when you crossfade, it also changes the colors of the LEDs. So I know I need background music, I need lights, and I need those trigger sound effects. I thought I'd demonstrate a couple of those on this uh, version that I've cobbled together onto cardboard. Uh, now this is done so that I can get an idea of where things will sit. Uh, it also got to be really annoying holding onto all these different NeoPixel rings that were wired up or hanging them onto little racks. Uh, so I took a piece of cardboard and laser cut it into this cross-section frame. What I have functioning on it right now are some of the trigger sound effects. So let me show you how that sounds. You can see there. I'm also flashing the lights a little brighter when it shoots. And I've got a reload sound. Uh, I can also switch the modes. So this is just switching the colors of the LEDs right now, but it'll also switch the background music. And I've also got a little tilt switch. I'm going to wait for that plane to go by. And I'm also using a tilt switch for this special sound. Uh, so when the character tips the gun, we get that dramatic sound effect. Next thing I'm going to do is show you how I built the different subsystems of this, sort of one piece at a time, so that I could figure out how the thing would work when it all comes together. So the first order of business was just to get NeoPixels running on an Arduino. Uh, you could use an Arduino Uno for this, uh, or a Adafruit Metro, that's what I'm using in this case. They're uh, interchangeable, and they'll use the same shields. And then I'm using uh, a NeoPixel ring, this is a, a 12 uh, NeoPixel ring. I've got that running to power and ground, and I've also got a fairly large capacitor running across power and ground to absorb any spikes in power when we turn the system on. Uh, you sometimes don't bother with this, but I know that I'll be pushing a lot of amperage through this when I have all hundred and something NeoPixels running in the system, so I decided to start off uh, with the capacitor in place. In this case, for a battery, I'm using a LiPo battery and a little booster. Uh, this is called a power boost, and it brings the 3.7 volt battery up to 5 volts, uh, and it can handle half an amp. I'm actually going to need a bigger uh, charger and booster when I have the full gun put together, uh, but for now, this is a great way to run it. Uh, a little aside, when I was working on this previously, I had uh, some parts of the system running at 12 volts and some running at 5 volts, and I got my wires mixed up and burned out some of the circuit. So on the suggestion of Phil Burgess, I have now put a label on the end of those identical cords uh, so that they say 5 volt and 12 volt, and I don't make that mistake again. Uh, in fact, I've got the cables over here somewhere to prove it. There we go. So these are, in fact, the identical little barrel plugs, but that one's now labeled 12 and that one's labeled 5. Uh, I've actually given up on using these entirely for this project at this point since I know it's going to be portable, and now I'm just running off of battery. Okay, let me set these over here. Okay, so I've got the basic sketch running on the Arduino to light up the NeoPixels, and I'm going to plug in power supply. Okay, so you can see when I uh, reset that, that I've got a little sweep uh, running on there that just turns the NeoPixels on one by one with a small delay between them. Phase two of the operation 
is to change modes when I toggle the uh, NeoPixels uh, crossfader switch. So for this, I actually have a different sketch running on here that does basically the same thing as the first one, but now we're going to be reading the uh, pin 5 on the board to check and see if we're grounding or not grounding this switch. So I'm going to hook up a hook up wire to pin 5 and I'll run that to the breadboard and plug this switch in, fire it up with power. Okay, so now you can see when I toggle this switch, we get one of two colors and the sweep runs in opposite directions. I thought this was kind of nifty and a neat way to test it. Uh, what I found once I got these large 60 NeoPixel rings is that it takes a long time for the whole gun to light up when you switch modes. So I'm actually just going to go to an instant color switch. Next thing to tackle is going to be the background music. So this is an Arduino Uno with the Music Maker MP3 shield on top of it. And I have an SD card in there that has two MP3s on it. Um, we're going to start out just with playing an MP3. So uh, I've got a 20 watt amplifier. And right now I'm running this dinky little speaker. Um, probably doesn't need the 20 watts, but ultimately I'll be running this one in the front, which is a 20 watt rated 4 ohm speaker, and it'll take advantage of that wattage on our amp. So this uh, little amplifier is going to run anywhere from 5 to 12 volts it's comfortable with, and I found that running the whole system on 5 volts is working just fine for me, so I'm not going to mess with it. Okay, so again, I've got a little power boost with a LiPo battery, and I'll plug this in. Turn the volume up. That's the first test, is just getting it to play an MP3. Next phase is, unplug that, to, again, use a toggle switch to flip between songs. So again, I'm going to run a jumper from pin 5 on the Arduino over to the breadboard. And again, I'm using an internal pull-up resistor on this pin 5 so that I can just short ground with this switch. So with the switch in place, I'm going to power the system. I don't have the potentiometer soldered in there right now because I'm going to extend it with wires, so it's a loose fit right now. That's why you'll hear it going in and out. So I'm going to hold the speaker here. And now when I flip the switch, it's going to go to the speed mode. And then switch it back over to healing mode. Okay, the last piece of the puzzle is the audio effects soundboard. This is probably the simplest part. There's no Arduino coding for this. Uh, it's simply based on file naming. So we're going to name a couple of files, uh, WAV files, a certain way. And based on the numbering in the name of the WAV file, the different pins on the audio effects board will trigger those sounds. So I've got a couple of buttons wired to a couple of pins here. And I have it plugged into a amplified speaker right now, just because I'm running out of these other little speakers and amps. And uh, here we can see the effect. So that's the main trigger, and this is the alt trigger. And then for the two sound effects that I have beyond that, there's going to be the reload sound when you raise the gun upward, and there's going to be the large blast sound when you use the special and point the gun downward. So instead of using something fancy like an accelerometer with a microcontroller, I just went to the very simple and tried and true tilt ball switch. And that is just what it sounds like. It's a little cylinder with a ball in it that shorts two contacts when it's tipped up, when it's tipped down, no contact. So here we can see 
So that's the reload sound. And here is the special. Okay, so those are the little subsystems that we have, and the next step is going to be to bring them together. We've got lights, we've got background music, we've got triggered effects, and uh, in the next part what I'm going to do is combine them together and reduce down the number of parts we're using, in fact. We won't have two Arduinos, we're going to have one toggle on one Arduino running both lights and background music. And then we'll have our audio effects board communicating with the Arduino as well to help control the lights. I'm John Park for Adafruit, and this is the Lucio Overwatch Blaster, part one.